Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen uh, we've been talking about uh, the role of the board we've been talking about active and passive uh, boards we've been talking about how reforms have basically uh, catalyzed the passive boards to become active boards and now we're going to be talking about the effective chair and the role of the non executive director so you've talked a lot about uh, the role of the chairman you've talked about the role of the chief executive officer but it's also very important to talk about the redefined the recalibrated the realigned role of the non executive director which is extremely important now what we see is is that the executive directors or the non executive directors basically depend upon the role of the chairman now if there is a chairman which tends to facilitate the executive directors or the non executive directors then we see that there is greater movement uh there is greater receptivity uh there is greater enableability there is uh, better performance and the board of directors tend to play a proactive role in getting things done involving themselves networking uh different uh, hinges and, and different collaborations together to ensure that the organization can perform better uh provide uh, proactive advice to the different divisions through the different committees and ensuring that there is better quality of production and better quality of performance uh, and thereby enhancing efficacy and also effectiveness of the organization however if the role of the chair is not conducive and uh, tends to be more domineering then what we see is that uh, there is a uh, more cause of disorientation so therefore uh, the chair does play a major role in all of these different activities especially of how the executive and non executive directors are performing now the effective chair the practice of combining the roles of chair and chief executive has been under notice since the cadbury report presented the suggestions on separating the roles separating the roles also focused attention on the significance of the distinctive duties of the chair as indicated by the combined code so what we see ladies and gentlemen is that what i also mentioned earlier on in different sessions that in the 20th century there would be a combined role of the chair and of the ceo and i also shared that diagram that when there is a combined role then the effectiveness of the organization tends to diminish when there is the role is separate especially as per the cadby report and also as per uh, the oxley uh, law then what we see is is that that then the organization tends to perform in a better way separating the roles also focus attention on the significance of the distinctive duties of the chair as indicated by the combined code and in the combined code what we see is is that three committees started functioning uh, on uh, very core areas of the organization so those independent companies which basically are manned by the board of directors would play a very active role to ensure that the organization would remain on its path uh, of acquiring its destination and of its objectives and most importantly would also ensure that the chief executive officer would not become omnipotent whereby he would be calling the shots and the board would only be a post office just stamping the different issues which are put in front of them now the role of the non executive director or directors was widely deliberated in the cadby report in 1992 and we see that the significance of the non executive director was greatly enhanced and as key members of the board they would both deliver objectivity and expertise now objectivity in the area of their influence or the committee that they represented and then the expertise which came with their wisdom and their connections and their connectivity uh, in different areas uh, inside and outside the particular organization roberts mcnulty and styles argue that non executives should be engaged but non executive so again it doesn't mean that they permanently join in they should be engaged but they should remain as non executive they should basically challenge the system challenge the processes challenge the employees but also have a supportive role they should be independent but they should also be involved so they cannot just be a mere spectator or just sit on the sidelines and and just endorse documents coming to them they have to proactively engage themselves and see how they can play a better role within the particular organization in the context of reform corporate governance non executives are vital for enhancing the actual effectiveness of the board and that is something which i have been talking about in the past many sessions and uh, what we see is that according to section 181 2 of the companies act 
A non-executive director means a person on the board of the company who is not from the executive management team and may or may not be independent, is expected to lend an outside viewpoint to the board of a company. So, two major points. Now, the two major points are not from among the executive management team and may or may not be independent. So, again, that is very important. And secondly, is expected to lend an outside viewpoint to the board of a company. So, these are the two major points that we have. And does not undertake to devote his whole working time to the company and not involved in managing the day-to-day -day affairs of the company. Is not a beneficial owner of the company or any of its associated companies or undertakings. Does not draw any remuneration from the company except the meeting fee. So, what we see is, is that the non-executive director is not a part of the formal structure of the organization, but yet tends to overlook and oversee the affairs of the company, does not do it in a permanent way, does not take a remuneration because then there would be a conflict of interest, can take the meeting fee and most importantly is not associated with any uh, companies or undertakings owned by the parent company and that is extremely important ladies and gentlemen. So, with these characteristics what we see is, is that the role of the non-executive director was realigned, recalibrated and was made more active to become a part of the different uh, combined court committees uh, which were enumerated and then to support the chairman from a more tactical viewpoint whereby the chairman would act as the father figure basically promoting the different non-executive directors like I showed in a particular diagram and they would be part of different committees, they would be influencing the organization and they would be ensuring that all uh, of the executive directors and all of the uh, C-suite officers would be performing the duty in the best possible way for the benefit of all the stakeholders of the organization and therefore we see this redefined role of an effective uh, chairman and also of non-executive directors. Thank you so much.